Hi, my name is Ilma and welcome to my channel. I've been posting Christian blogs 11 straight years every day. Today I'd like to share Ecclesiastes 7 verses 1 to 6. Here's a word of God. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness of face the heart is made glad. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of the fools is in the house of mirth. It is better for a man to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear the song of fools. For as the cracking of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fools. This is also vanity. Ecclesiastes 7, 1 to 6. And here's the poem I wrote inspired by those verses. The better things in life. What does it truly mean to have a better life? Is it to be wealthy, famous, powerful, or be emulated? A life of integrity and honesty is much better than prosperity. It makes one have less conflicts, live in peace, and have less anxiety. Many people fear death because they don't know Jesus Christ. But if you live, believe in the Lord, even if you die, you will have life. For those who do not know him, they will easily cling to life on earth. They wouldn't want to let go of all their wealth and good health. The laughter of the wicked is not better than those who are mourning. If you serve Jesus, you will know that he comforts those who are grieving. He didn't die for us to have, a hap to have happy lives. He died so we can be reconciled with God. The better things in life are those that lead us to our maker. It is not what feels good. Reflection. What's the difference between happiness and joy? Is joy better or not? Joy, according to Galatians 5.23, is one of the fruit of the Spirit. So joy is not the same as happiness. Um, you can have joy and still in the midst of adversity, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of grieving, mourning, in the midst of loss. Because joy is a fruit given to us by God for those who love Him. Um, in, in the letter of Paul to the different churches, he focuses so much on the importance of embracing suffering. Because when we embrace suffering, it says here in, in verse 3, Ecclesiastes 7 verse 3 says, Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness of face the heart is made glad. So in other words, when we are in pain, in tears, and in, in suffering, our heart grows. In other words, it becomes more compassionate, it becomes more understanding, it learns that life is not just about happiness, it's about, um, it's about growing. So when we are always aiming to be happy, chances are we are going to make idols of ourselves, make idols of other people, um, raise it up in such a way that this thing is what will make it happy, it, then it becomes our idol. So that's probably why um, they call it vanity if you are always wanting to be pleasured or be be happy because um, and that's from the world when we say is be happy do not be sad or uh, but but God says be sad so you can be glad isn't that so interesting be sad so you can be glad because when you're sad 
that means that you're sharing in other people's what they're going through or what you're going through. So when we are suffering, we learn to, to endure. We learn to grow our character. We learn to, um, in, in, in the book of James, it says in uh, chapter one, uh, be joyful when you have adversities or, or all kinds of trials or suffering. Well, that is so different from the worldview because the worldview don't want you to suffer. The worldview don't want you to be sad. The worldview wants us to be totally um, happy all the time and that is impossible because this life is about growing, not about being happy. So I encourage you, so, so I'd like to answer that second question that says, is joy better or not? Well, joy is much better than being happy because joy has depth. Happiness is shallow. So happiness is momentary. It can just die away soon, but joy can be everlasting. Thanks for watching. I hope you check my website at ilmaarts.com for artworks, photographs, and a copy of this blog. Please subscribe to my channel on YouTube so I could make more videos for the Lord. And um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check my other um, over 3,000 videos I've done in the 11 years I've been doing this. Just type on Google or on YouTube search Ilma's Palm Devotional. Have a wonderful day.